Fear trade took center stage Monday as equities sold off, but the market now seems to have stabilized. Our next guest says that gold's oversold rebound may continue. Frank Holmes joins us now. Frank, good to see you again. Well, it's great to be here. And you know what's interesting, Danielle, is that gold was in a rebound for two weeks. And it had a significant move before, almost like a, uh, a forecast of problems going to happen in the capital markets. Well, let's talk about the volatility we saw in the marketplace on Monday, propping gold prices higher. The market has calmed down since then. But do you think more of these rallies uh, may be in store here, Frank? Yes, I do. And I think that the, uh, the Fed can come in in the futures market and try to stabilize the uncertainty in the capital markets. And that's what I was hearing from rumors were taking place. Uh, but I, I think that this, what's important is today took place was the PMI numbers came out. And it looks like the U.S., the one month is below the three months, just marginally, but it says there's a rollover. And if you recall back in July, when the global PMIs turned negative, oil fell $4 that day. And since then, it's fallen about $15. Well, let's talk about what's happening in China. Despite the slowdown and uncertainty we're seeing in the world's second largest economy, you say the country's appetite for gold is still there. So much so that they're selling U.S. dollars in exchange for gold. What could this do to the price of the metal, Frank? Well, I think they're doing that to basically continue this program of, of becoming uh, a special drawing rights with the IMF and, and, and buying gold, so selling dollars to buy gold. Uh, but I do think, though, Danielle, the love trade has slowed down in China with GDP per capita going flat and sliding here with PMIs. Uh, but I, I think what's going to happen is that in the next three months, we're going to see a big stimulus and a change of tune out of China to actually enact and take action with all these big uh, infrastructure programs they've announced. Well, I guess the biggest question coming out of yesterday, Frank, was, you know, with the market route, why didn't gold react more? I don't know why. You know, it just happens when it happens. And uh, gold is not always linear. It's not always one way up and down. And I think you have a great website that shows you that the demand in gold or the, or the currency moves of the gold can have the two big factors that move the price of gold. So I love going to your site where I see that. Well, you're, so you're giving gold a break, Frank. I'm giving gold a break. But I do think that uh, it continues to be bought by, by the central bank, and they're announcing it every month. Uh, and I think that that's a key component in the overall demand. And central banks around the world continue to be net buyers of gold as they're basically going through this currency wars we're experiencing. Uh, and I think they're only going to heat up. All right, Frank, let's get to your touchdown pass this week. We have growth data. We had Fed officials speaking. What's it going to be? Jackson Hole. Lots of rumors coming out. It's the groupies, the Fed meet in Jackson Hole, and there's lots of conversation that'll be taking place for Thursday, Friday. All right, Frank, thanks so much. We'll be paying attention. Thanks for joining us. Great to be with y'all. And thanks for watching today's Gold Report. We'll see you tomorrow.